My family wants me to join them for Christmas. After disowning me over eight years ago, I need advice on whether to go or not to go. So here's the thing. Eight years ago, my family kind of kicked me out and we haven't been close since. But now, out of the blue, they want me, my wife, who's 27, and our little one-year-old girl to come over for Christmas. It's been a while, and I've been getting all sorts of advice from my friends about whether we should go or not. One of my friends was like, hey, why don't you share what's going on with some folks on the internet and see what they think? So that's what I'm doing. I'm 25, by the way, and I've got three siblings. My mom's 52 and my dad's 54. Just to keep things simple, let's call my siblings Michael. He's 31. Sarah, she's 28. And then there's my twin brother, Casey. We're just using these names to keep their real ones private. Growing up, I was the odd one out in my family, like the puzzle piece that doesn't quite fit. You see, in my family, sports are a huge deal. My dad was this amazing basketball player back in his college days, playing for a Division II school. My mom, she was all about volleyball. Then there's my brother, Michael, who was into soccer, my sister, Sarah, who was all about softball, and my twin brother, Casey, who was a football star, playing as the main running back on his team. And then there was me. I wasn't into any of those sports. Instead, I found my passion in archery. But here's the kicker. My family didn't take it seriously. They called it the wimpy sport. It felt like they were always cheering on my siblings and showing up for their games and matches. But when it came to my archery tournaments, it was like pulling teeth, trying to get them to come watch me compete. From when I was 14 to 16 years old, I was in about 20 tournaments. And guess what? They only showed up to one. It really made me feel left out and not valued for what I loved doing. Even though I wasn't exactly neglected, I always felt like I was on the outside looking in when it came to my family. They took care of me, sure, but I never felt that emotional connection or support from them that my siblings seemed to get. Every time I tried to talk to them about feeling left out or not supported, especially with my archery, they brushed me off saying I was just looking for attention. That hurt, but it's not the reason things really blew up between us. The real trouble started when I was 15. That's when I started dating Amy, who's the same age as me. We were both in the same grade, and after dating for about six or seven months, I thought things were going really well. So I decided it was time she met my family. They all seemed to like her a lot, which was a big relief because I was already starting to think she might be the one, even though we were pretty young. But then, things took a massive turn. A couple of years into our relationship, one of Amy's former friends dropped a bomb on me. She claimed Amy had been cheating on me for a few months. At first, I had no clue who it could be with. But when I confronted Amy about it, she broke down and admitted it was my twin brother, Casey. Imagine that. Finding out the person you thought you might spend your future with was cheating on you with your own twin brother. It was like a double betrayal from two of the people I should have been able to trust the most. When Amy confessed that her feelings for my brother Casey were stronger than what she ever felt for me, it felt like my world came crashing down. It was a huge shock, and it hurt more than I can describe. Later that day, when I confronted Casey about it, all my built-up anger and hurt exploded. I ended up punching him, which was wrong. I know I shouldn't have resorted to violence, but at that moment, all the years of feeling less important, less supported, and now this betrayal just overwhelmed me. As a result of what happened, my family had a choice. They could have pressed charges against me because I was old enough to be tried as an adult. But they didn't, and instead I was sent away to live with my aunt. She was pretty much the black sheep of the family too, having been estranged and living in a different city about two hours away. That moment marked the end of any contact I had with my family. Moving in with my aunt and her husband was tough at first. I was dealing with a lot of emotions and trying to figure out how to move on from everything that had happened. But with time, their support helped me a lot. They showed me that it was possible to live a good life without the approval or support of my immediate family. Gradually, I stopped longing for a relationship with them and started to focus on building my own path, thanks to the new start my aunt and her husband gave me. After moving away, I started fresh. I switched to a new high school and then made my way to university right in my city, where I worked hard and ended up graduating with a degree in electrical engineering. Life took a turn for the better when I met the woman who would become my wife. We got married, and I remember wrestling with the decision of whether to invite my family to the wedding. In the end, I chose not to, fearing it might lead to unwanted drama on such an important day. Life moved on, and together my wife and I bought a house about an hour away from my aunt's place. Not long after, we were overjoyed to welcome our daughter into the world. Then, about a week ago, and a whole year after my daughter was born, something unexpected happened. I got a Facebook message from my mom and dad. 
They said they wanted to reconnect and suggested we all get together over Christmas at their house. I was taken aback and told them I'd think about it, mentioning I might have other plans, but would let them know for sure soon. And as if that wasn't surprising enough, my siblings Michael and Sarah, whom I hadn't been in touch with since I left, sent me friend requests on Facebook. That felt really weird to me, considering everything that had happened and the years of silence between us. My wife has told me that if I decided to go, she and my daughter would spend Christmas at my father-in-law's house as she does not have to deal with unwanted stress as she is two months pregnant, and I agree with her. My question to those reading this is that should I go and try to reconcile with my family, or should I not? I am very conflicted on what to do. On one hand, they perhaps feel bad about what they did to me and want to apologize for what they did. But on the other hand, perhaps if I go there, they will try to make me apologize to Casey, which I do not want to. Any advice would be helpful. Now for the top of comments before reading the update. I don't know. As a parent, I cannot fathom going no contact with one of my children for eight years after my other child did something so cruel to him. So he, him. That is just inconceivable to me. I would totally understand if my son hit his brother if he ever did something like that may be wrong. And I know I'm not supposed to say that, but we're all still human. Whether you can move past the fact they abandoned you to your aunts and turned their backs for eight years is your choice. But personally, I don't know if I could. If you can't and don't want to see them again, I doubt anyone would blame you. If they do, they don't know the full story. If they do know the full story, then they're not worth your time either. As a rule, I'm very suspicious of any stories I hear of families wanting to reconcile without addressing any of the issues that led to the estrangement to begin with. I'm inclined to believe there's something they want from him, like the kidney or wanting access to their granddaughter or something. He has decades of resentment against his family, and they believe they have the higher moral ground. It would be interesting to see what they really want. I would not do it. Christmas, Christmas you spend with those you love. I would suggest you meet with your parents for a lunch in public and see why they want to reconnect and then decide if you want them in your life. You get to be the one to decide, not those that kick you out, just you. They have no rights to know your wife and child at this point. Merry Christmas, and congrats for the next bundle of joy. Now for the update. Update. Hi there, guys. It's been a rough two weeks, but thank you all for your advice and support. This is going to be a really long post. I wanted to post earlier, but some things got in the way. Two days after Christmas, my wife began to experience unbearable pain in her abdomen area, and she hardly could stand on her two feet. Me and her sister, 30-year-old female, rushed her to hospital, where we found out that my wife had suffered a miscarriage and that the fetus had to be removed right away. Honestly, the worst part for me was explaining to my wife what had happened due to complications surrounding the operation. My wife was forced to stay for two more days. Honestly, I have been trying to stay strong for my wife and my daughter, but honestly, I am struggling right now. On to the update of the original post. Most of you that commented on the same day I posted told me to not spend Christmas with them because of the significance of that holiday. I agree and decided I would spend the rest of the holidays with my wife. They never make time for me, so why should I make time for them? When I texted them this, I assumed they would try to argue with me, but rather they said they respected my opinion and could not wait to see me after the holidays. I began to do some digging into my family to try to figure out why they have reached out. Michael is a corporate lawyer who works for a major company in my hometown. By looking through his Facebook page, he has two daughters and was married to his wife in 2016. Sarah appears to be married to a doctor. She herself eight years ago was studying to be a nurse, and they have a son together. I have a friend who lives in my hometown, and that's parents who are friends with my parents. When I asked her about Sarah, she told me that Sarah had divorced her first husband, the one she was dating eight years ago after he had committed mail fraud. Casey got married to Amy right after high school, and together they have two kids together. I could not exactly figure out what he or his wife does for a living through Facebook, but judging that they bought a big house last year in the midst of a pandemic tells me they are not really struggling. My dad seems to be going through a midlife crisis and my mother is really into the wellness community. I then began to list the reasons of why they wanted to possibly reach out to me now. One money? Unlikely because eight years ago my parents' combined salary was higher than my wife and my salary. And given that my siblings are not struggling financially, makes me think money is not the reason. Two organ donation couldn't be the case, but seems unlikely. But a Redditor said that it could be that Casey, given he is my twin, would be my most likely match. And I think it's unlikely because he was tagged in a Facebook post scheme just a week before Christmas. Two, regarding my daughter, they could possibly be reaching out to me to have a relation to my daughter, but I honestly am not sure. My daughter is not the first granddaughter for my parents, so I do not know why they want to meet her. 
They most likely found out my daughter existed because my wife's Facebook account was public. She has since provided her account. I then contacted my aunt, the estranged one who took me in informing her about the situation, and she explained to me why they were reaching out to me after all this time. To understand this situation, you need to understand why my aunt was estranged. My paternal grandpa, 79-year-old male and grandma, 76-year-old female, had four children. My dad was the second oldest and my aunt was the third. My aunt, after college came out to her parents, has been horrible and began dating her girlfriend. My grandparents immediately disowned her and refused to have any contact with her. However, about four years ago, my grandpa began to reach out. About a month ago, my grandpa had been asking about me and what I was doing in life and whether I was married or had kids. My aunt responded by calling my grandpa out for wanting to know about me after he supported Casey for what he did. That is when the whole situation changes. My grandpa told my aunt that because I had cheated on Amy with one of her close friends, I deserved to be estranged. My grandpa is a religious nut, so he looks down on cheating. He had been told by my family that after the friend who allegedly cheated with confessed to Amy, she went to Casey and Sarah for support and comfort. And when I found out about this, I confronted and brutally attacked Casey and Sarah, while Sarah was the one who tried to break me and Casey apart. I did not lay a finger on her, and I did not brutally attack Casey. When my aunt was telling me this, my jaw dropped. I could not believe that they hated me so much that they were willing to make up a terrible lie about me and spread it around. My aunt later told Grandpa the full truth on what truly happened, and my aunt told me he was shocked because he always thought Casey was a good kid. My grandpa then asked my aunt for my number, which she declined to give. I figured out why my parents and siblings wanted to get into touch with me. It turns out my grandpa had told my parents and my siblings that if they did not apologize for what they did to me and have me over for the family Christmas dinner, they would be cut off from his will. For context, he is a multimillionaire, so that is why they reached out to me not to apologize about how they all wronged me in the past, but rather because if they did not, they would not get anything from Grandpa. What a bunch of free people. After hearing about this from my aunt, I decided to block all of them. Why should I respond to them? At this point, all of them are debt to me. I have a wife to support after what she went through and a family that respects me and my in-laws. However, this does not end here. As three days after New Year's Eve, I received a call from an unknown number on my work phone. I am used to getting calls from unknown numbers because of my career, and when I picked up, I heard my grandfather's voice. He most likely got my number from my company website. The first thing he did was apologized for not trying to get into contact with me for the past eight years. He told me he was sorry that he could not be there for important events such as my graduation, my wedding, and the birth of my daughter. I was not really close to him before, so him cutting me off did not bother me. Later in the call, he told me he was so disgusted with the rest of my family that he is cutting them off as well and adding me to it. I honestly do not know how to feel about that as the money would be helpful, but at the same time, I do not want him to use this as a way to force a relationship between me and my daughter. We talk for about half an hour, the way the call what made me think that perhaps I could build a good relationship with my grandpa. But then he told me something that got me really pissed. He told me that he was disappointed in that my daughter had not taken the family name for context after I got married to my wife. The issue of what last name to use as a couple came up. For some legal reasons, I was unable to change my last name to my wife's last name. But we decided as a couple that all of our future children would have her last name. I, at this point, unloaded on my grandpa calling him a senile old man and many other hurtful things and told them to never contact me ever again. The audacity of this man to say that after what I went through is something I will not let him use. The money I receive in the will to control me. Even if I receive the money, I will donate it to a local charity. But he is a man of false promises, so this is unlikely. These past few weeks have been really tough for me and I hope to make it to the other side. My wife has provided her Facebook account and her in-laws have done the same. What they do try to contact me is beyond me. How they would probably hire a private detective to try to find me. I believe they do not know where I live, but you never know. I have thought of a get a restraining order, but given that there are lawyers within the family, means getting original poster will be hard. I did not really get any time to answer any questions given in my last post before it was deleted for some reason. I will do my best to answer any questions for the next day or two, but after this, I am done using Reddit for a while. Thank you all for your advice, and I wish you all the best in this new year. Story 2. I, 37-year-old male, had dinner with my estranged sister, 47-year-old female, and was forced to pay the bill. How I should proceed. I have a sister. Let's call her Clara, then. I used to be somewhat close with when we were young, 
Over our adult lives, we've drifted apart three years ago due to a fight about her demanding. I give my foreign transit pass worth around $1.40 to a mutual cousin who she was close to. But I barely know the cousin. We become estranged. It was a silly fight that didn't make sense, since Clara had a good paying job at the time so she could have just given the money herself. The cousin could have easily afforded it also. We haven't really spoken since. Fast forward to yesterday. I wanted to reconnect with Clara and my nephew, 28-year-old male. I suggested we meet at a restaurant that she likes. I brought my wife and my toddler son. Clara brought my nephew and her new husband of two years' stepfather to the nephew. The dinner was good. The heavyset nephew wanted to order for everyone, so he ended up ordering quite a lot of food. We had a few, like, conversations about life, travel, work, etc. It felt great. Like I've done some good to reconnect with family members and have a sister again. Over half of the food was left. The waiter packed it up and then left the check. My wife had to use the restroom, so I was left with my toddler son along with Clara, my nephew, and her husband with one fell swoop. Clara picked up the tray with the containing check and dropped it right in front of me with a thud. Then she said with a smile, Here, you pay for it. I honestly thought she was joking. I've never encountered a situation where your fellow patrons don't at least split the bill. But being shoved the bill was a shock to me. Especially when both Clara and the husband has a senior position at one of the most popular U.S. shipping company. Also, the nephew was just bragging about how he has this great job that makes a ton of money while doing nothing. So I'm basically being asked to treat three grown adults. At that moment, it felt surreal to me. All three of them were smiling, looking at me to pay, waiting, and my response. I felt they had no choice but to drop my card while still hoping this was all a joke. I strained to maintain a smile. It wasn't a joke. Clara took the tray with the check and only my credit card and handed it to the waiter. The waiter came back with the charge card and check and I uncomfortably signed my name on it. My wife came back from the restroom, unknowing of the situation. She saw that I looked distraught. Asked if I was okay, I said I needed to use the restroom and excuse myself in the bathroom. I wanted to scream like, what just happened? I didn't have enough time to process what just occurred. I came back to the table. The cherry on top to this event was that they also took home all the leftovers. They just took it, like, really? Clara shoved me with the entire bill and then took all leftovers. It was just wild. After we parted with Clara and her family, I told my wife what happened. My wife became livid at Clara. I was angry also at Clara and also at myself. I didn't understand why I agreed to pay. It felt like it happened so fast and I was putting this situation where I had no choice but to pay for the bill or ruin the dinner. Eventually, my anger turned to disappointment at Clara, thinking how a sibling can be so petty over a dinner bill over the drive home. Both my wife and I came to the conclusion I should just ask her for her portion of the bill, three or five. When I got home, I texted Clara with a non-confrontational request for payment. Some minutes have gone by, Clara replied. Okay, that's the only response since yesterday. So my question is, how should I proceed with this relationship? Honestly, I'm not really sure what to think of it all. Now for the advices. No need to maintain any relationship at all. You reached out to her to make things better, but she saw it as an opportunity to get back at you for what happened three years ago. Not just that her husband and son were also in on it since they ordered too much food that they couldn't even finish. Kept smiling and expected you to pay the bill. Plus, took the leftovers home. I'm pretty sure they didn't even thank you for the dinner. Clearly they had this planned out. Story 3. My 35-year-old female husband, 38-year-old male, told me I'm disgusting. We've been together years, have two kids together, one a toddler, the other elementary age. I struggle with depression, anxiety, and post-traumatic stress disorder, severely. I'm on three different medications and have a history of meth use where I died twice, not to mention almost being murdered. This is in my past. Yeah, I still struggle. It happens between that and childhood trauma. I know I'm going to forever have the struggle. I'm a stay-at-home mom. My kids are homeschooled. I am with them 24-7. Our youngest still co-sleep between my mental health and the time my kids take up. I just sort of put my personal hygiene on the back burner. I will admit I shower every other day. I brush my teeth every day, though I know I've gained weight since we met. I've also had two kids and then I was bedridden due to a car accident for six months. Tonight he told me I'm disgusting that I let myself go. He hates it that I used to care about myself. Now I just don't. I don't know how to process this. I just, it really hurt my feelings. And my first instinct was to lash out but I just left the room. ABS. Now I'm crying. How do I explain that? It's just not easy for me to have the desire to put more effort in. I want to do better. I want to lose weight and look prayer. But it's like something inside me just hates me so much that I can't. I don't know how to describe it. 
How should I go about bringing up that really hurt my feelings and make him understand it's hard for me? Update. I don't know why everyone is harping on the old school bit like my kids are extremely socialized and they learn a lot through various means. Online curriculum worksheet co-op. My reason for no public school is honestly nobody's business. But since you all can't stop bringing it up, I believe school to be unsafe. Bullying, school shootings, no real world value. My son was in kindergarten and coming home telling me he was being bullied. Talks of screw were happening cousin, not to mention his individualized education plan being completely disregarded numerous times. I educate my kids at home, but they are not prisoners at home. They have plenty of real world experiences and friends and are educated, plenty for their ages and for everyone trying to say they think it's a red flag or dangerous. Comparing me to a mom who killed her children. Really? I love my children. Everything I do is for them. That probably is a major reason I am burned out and others are right. I can't pour from an empty cup. I spend all my energy and love on my kids, leaving none for myself or my husband. Homeschooling my kids is not a red flag. I would never hurt them, and I'm appalled that so many would even think that simply because of my choice on education. One more thing. My past drug use is in my past. I am clean and sober and have been before my children were born or conceived. So screw off respectfully. How dare any of you think that has something to do with my parenting? The only thing it's done is be more aware of the dangers of drug use. And when my kids are old enough, then being able to share my experiences so they know that it's no joke. Now for the advices. Depression sucks. It makes you not want to do anything at all. Get those kids in a real school so that you have time to focus on you a little bit. That was my first thought. Anyone in her position really shouldn't be teaching, doing her children and herself a disservice. She switched out drugs for having kids around her 24 7 Check out some books on codependency OP. You'll feel better about yourself when you start taking care of yourself. The kids need experiences outside what their mother provides, social interactions, and a proper education.